Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to give a very simple explanation on what exactly the hill simulation or hill testing is. Because most of the message or you know, the questions has been arised to explain this on a very simple way. All right. So I'll just try to give as much as simple I can. Um, let me give your feedback at the end. All right. So see, it's very simple. Here it's a act pedal and yeah act pedal and here it is a speedometer which uh, from the torque it is just showing the speed so here it's very simple we have two inputs one is the act pedal then another one is the brake pedal all right so here accelerator pedal and brake pedal and here speedometer so one output so here the input is two and output is one all right so now let's let's pass here and switch to this place so this is the actual car in the actual car you can see the again act pedal and brake pedal all right so this is just a car and here the real speedometer so now what this um, you driver wants to do is he had to apply the act pedal uh, say for example he can reach up to 80 km per hour all right and maybe the percentage of the act pedal act pedal is nothing but the accelerator pedal so the percentage of the act pedal has been given is close to oh, 60 percentage then uh, he just releases or uh, he can reduce the percentage to 40 percent and he's, he want to apply a brake to 10 percent so the speed reduces to say 50 km per hour assumption all right so this he can do but he his functionalities are limited he can't take risk all right so he can't test the car all right so also the software developed can't directly put to the driver without any validation so that should be a proper channel or proper environment to validate this how can he test how can a tester or uh, the software developer can assure this software obviously he can they can do some uh, uh, testing whether they can give the inputs and the and they can expect the output in the software level all right but this software is not directly goes to the user even some software say the websites like Amazon Flipkart they, they are of course a software uh, but yeah, there also the software has been brought into the user, but still there is so many changes. So it's, it's, a, it's a different part of it, okay? So coming to coming back to the automobile or automotive, here we have the input and output. The software is ready, but the software has been integrated or flashed into this ECU. This is called ECU, all right? So here ECU is ready. So this ECU has been put into this Mr. Bean's car. All right. So the ECU is ready, input is ready, output is ready. Now the dri the driver. I mean, now you back to the testing environment. The tester applies the act pedal. So how this accelerator pedal goes into the ECU? Here you will have the channel called ADC. All right. Sorry, A. That is analog to digital converter. It can be any any converter. So this is a generic name. ADC converter is a generic name. It can be any. All right. So if this is not works, let me open the exit this and I'll open the pane so this can be more precise. Yeah, fine. It's very simple. Okay. So whatever so far have been explained. Let's quickly. Yeah. Here. So this is the input all right and here this is the output yeah so here we can place the ADC that is analog to digital converter and so what this ADC will do it will take the analog input so there may be again any any component any converter they have we have so many vendors all right so they are doing their job to convert the analog signal into digital so digital may be the voltage all right so this ADC may be integrated into the ECU 
or there may be again it depends on the vendor to vendor so uh, for example if you are uh, if you are buying a washing machine all right even washing machines are microcontroller so you can buy a washing machine with attached with the dryer or only uh, the only the only the machine is separate and the dryer is separate like that so it can, it can be anything it's completely customized and a dynamic all right so that's what most of the solutions or the dynamic solutions fine so here the analog to digital has been converted and it will be put into the ecu and what are the signals is coming into the ecu it can convert into the another channel or another component that is called dac that is digital to analog converter that is a dac all right so this dac will give you the analog output fine so the question is here it's converting adc here it's converting dac it can directly go oh right it can directly flow through but what is the purpose of using the ecu here that's a reason we are using the hill environment not only hill environment any environment as we are focusing here on hill simulation or hill testing so we are using the hill environment to to adapt this ecu this controller so this controller has a processor which can do many tasks as you want say for example I can give you only one example you can consider a number of examples like that say for example I am giving you giving a act pedal as speed 80 km per hour as soon the ignition turns on that is a third input you can consider okay so the speed of the vehicle may drastically increase to 90 km per hour or 120 km per hour so it will be like this you can, you can just I'll just draw a rough chart rough uh, graph okay so it's a zero second one second two three four so seconds so it will start like this so in one second if the car starts to give this speed the drivers or the uh, passengers or the code uh, you know the companions are not safe they may not safe because of the surge it will be a sudden surge all right so it is not really good for um, for any any kind of drivers all right so what we have to do is we have to reduce the torque we have to we have to attenuate we have to limit the torque so for that what we can do we can we can just use here the torque limiter torque limiter is a kind of one functionality what it will do it will whatever the the driver he, he may knows or uh, he, he may without knowing he is pressing the sudden acceleration the car should not turn on turn off and it should not be a surge so the anti the torque limiter the torque limiter make the anti surge effect so instead of the graph like this how it will be is it will be like this so that means it will be a gradual increase so that the drivers or the passengers they'll be feel comfortable all right so this can be validated in the hl environment so this is a validation part but how this form as a loop hill is a hardware in the loop how this really forms as a loop it's it's again a simple it's a it's a closed loop environment i mean it's a closed loop concept the input will be taken then there will be a feedback mechanism the feedback will compare say for example the initial torque can be of um, uh, you know uh, 200 or 300 um, uh, the, the range you, you can you can consider the any range okay Newton meter 300 nm then the speed can be some 20 kilometer per hour within the uh, time of uh, two to three seconds yes it can it, it, this is what the logic has been written in the software and these will be put into the microcontroller and this microcontroller keep on checking for every input and once the input is okay it will pass us here if not the here the, the feedback controller will just just send back here and what will happen is here there will be another controller it will just reduce it will reduce the speed and it will give as an input so again here it will check yes if the check is passed then it will goes out all right so this is 
this is what the testing they are doing so now whatever we have been covered is so again it's for a beginners or who want to learn really what is hill testing or simulation that can be useful for them who are really know these so this may be kind of a piece of cake for you, you can just skip all right so here we have gone through till now we have gone through input inputs then output then we have the components like ADC DAC then we have ECU and this ECU primarily works with the micro it's a controller it's a closed loop controller closed loop environment all right then all right so then uh, this can be uh, this can be a loop all right so uh, here I have given only one example of the torque limitation so we have so many features in the car so all the features can be accommodated here fine then coming to the communication so how it will flow in, in, this, in this just paint I have just drawn it will flow like this it will flow like this but how it really really flows that matters a lot right so that can be taken care of by the protocols like a Ethernet protocol or CAN protocol or LIN protocol they are responsible for making the flow input to ECU ECU to again output if there is any 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 fluctuations that is that's what the controller will take care so it will again check with so this all happens within a fraction of a second so that I, I think recently I have discussed like uh, just if you consider the 8051 microcontroller it's, it's one of the oldest microcontroller you may study in your college like maybe 15 or 20 years before from 2024 20, all right so this itself can can process uh, you know thousands of instructions per second so now we have advanced controllers they can the, it, it will be like a in fraction of seconds they can do so many operations all right so that's what the advancements are about so here this will keep on this loop will keep on uh, keep on you know mm, uh, loop until it gives it gets the desired output so as a tester what you can do you can do you can play what you want what are all the input you you can give you can give you can give the even you can try with the negative value also of course it should not take if it takes as it's a defect and you can you can uh, as per the boundary value analysis in the test taking technique you can give the extreme out of boundary value yeah that also you can do so you, you can uh, you can give sudden up up down so how that how the torque how the surge happens how the torque limiter is really works so it should not be like this like this it should be gradually like this like this all right so these are all the thing you can do in your testing environment and now now the uh, what you can do is you can just go through what are all the types of ADC analog to digital converter what it really does yes of course I have given a single statement uh, you can just uh, really go through so that you can learn so many stuff in this and what are all the ADCs available in the market what are the recent one yes you can upgrade yourself and again DAC it's really parallel to a once you start to learn ADC a DAC also same all right then ECUs again ECUs also we have discussed so many stuff about ECUs or uh, even what are the modern days ECU that you know so far that also you can start to learn so these are all the uh, you know the start that you can be uh, aware into hill testing when you start into hill testing then what because once you complete this then you can start to learn about all the components has been used using in the hill testing ECU is just one component even the ADC DAC all together into the ECU this is just a single component all right so here if you see in HL environment we used to call this act pedal is not act pedal it is an actuator or a sensor sorry it's a sensor I'm sorry it is a sensor it senses the input of the input pressure of the user it, uh, this brake pedal senses the pressure of the um, uh, user so that it starts to uh, make the fluid mechanism has been to give the which cylinder requires what pressure so which wheel requires the pressure it will decides with this again this microcontroller so this is the sensor and here the output the torque generate is actuator so again you start to go through about what is sensor what is actuator how both relates it's a cause and effect concept all right so this is how you have to start with HIL testing because 
yeah the reason is uh, most of the beginners who has completed their graduation or who started HL testing in, in their career so they want to start with HL testing and they so directly jump into the components of the ECU how the flow works everything so it's a bit, bit complex to understand so this is how you should start with you understand these basics then you start with this loop then how this communication works so what are the VNs what are the VT cards what are the VN channels VN protocols for the Ethernet or the CAN or the LIN that you can start with all right so and you, you can have a number of use cases to deal with what are the input and output you have so yeah, that's all about this video if you really yes uh, okay to proceed in this way step by step yes you can also suggest your feedback and if you want to learn some new concepts or a contents yes you can always get back we'll catch you in the next video until then bye take care